Trubisky be in the conversation for rookie of the year? Asking the wrong guy. Asking the wrong guy. I, I, I know uh, I'm not a big guy on all those trophies and shit like that, all, all the talk on that. I, I'm not. I, 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 I have, I've told you guys, I think I've watched all the young kids in this league, and it's filled with really good players, which is great for our game. I've got a special guy here because he, he, he's understanding really quickly what it is to be a pro. Uh, I see some of the, the other stuff that goes on with some of the younger players in the league, uh, I don't have to worry about that with Zach. Zach, Zach understands. Best, the best thing I can say about Zach, forget about his skill level. He respects the league. Um, and that's what I love about this guy. That's why this guy, to me, is one of the most special players of the young guys, is he respects the league. How does that show? Like, like how do you explain that? To somebody. It, it, it just doesn't show. There's no flamboyance. There's no yapping. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no, the, the, his body language is dead on. Uh, those are all the things I look for at a young player uh, because they can get down the wrong road pretty quickly. Uh, it's my job certainly not to teach him how to play the game because he is well beyond his years that way. Uh, my job is what type of person is he going to be and uh, I, I think uh, the two greatest comments I think you can give a player, at least in my mind, is he understands what it is to be a pro and he respects the league. It doesn't happen that way all the time in our game anymore. Respecting the league doesn't happen that way all the time. And I'm thrilled we have this guy that is, is way ahead of the schedule that way. How, how has he impacted your team this year, th that addition? Him as a player? Yeah. He, he's been obviously a huge part uh, to our power play. As far as the uh, the patience of it, the uh, the ability to run it, uh, we got two young guys that run it. Basically, uh, is him and, and Wenberg. Uh, second unit's coming along really good too, with Jonesy and now Sam's over there. But Z, uh, is, our power play last year, we didn't have a quarterback, and uh, this kid has stepped in. We gave it to him, sink or swim, and uh, from day one, he is he has taken control of that. His, uh, just his skill level, uh, how he sees the game, uh, his lack of panic. Uh, and the, the thing I love about him most is he'll make a mistake, but he'll come right back and try to make that same play the next shift. Not worry about it for two periods or two games. He'll go right back at that next play because he, he has, he doesn't say it, uh, doesn't show it. He, but he has an inner confidence in himself that, that he can make these plays. And again, that's the most important thing about him is he, he doesn't talk about that. He just, he just a, he's a good kid that wants to play and respects the National Hockey League. Mike, Mike Babcock's in a similar state that you are in terms of turning it over to really young players. You've talked about this throughout the season. Has that gotten more natural for you, easier for you? Have you developed a level of trust with your young players? With our, this point of this yes, season? yeah, yeah. I, I have. And, uh, um, and quite honestly, uh, that's something I've really, I knew I had to work at this summer as a coach. Um, that doesn't come easy for coaches. Uh, uh, we're all a bit of control freaks and uh, want, want, want to touch everything. Um, and sometimes we touch so many things we screw it up. And uh, um, that's, been a, that's been a huge process, I think, with the development of the team here is um, uh, me trusting that. And it's not like I'm just going to give you trust. Yeah. That has to be earned. And that's a huge component of, of where we've come as a unit here, as a team yeah. concept within our, within our group, young and old. So I didn't trust my old guys last yeah. year. Uh, I was just getting to know them. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a process that's still ongoing. But certainly, uh, my trust level has uh, has gone twofold from where I was at the beginning of the year when I last year. And could you have done this earlier in your career? Was it justified doing it earlier in your career, or the, are the players coming into the league different now? I, I think they're, they're different. More, yeah, I do. Uh, I, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I was informa information overload with players, uh, and, and, we, and I felt that was the best way uh, to coach a team is is get them ready and. Uh, as I said, dot the I's, cross the T's, all that stuff. I think the athletes change. I think the game has come more instinctive. 
Uh, and that's what's great about our game is is just the instinctiveness of these players. Um, yeah, we got to get out of the way. I think coaches more and more, at least at least I, this coach here is trying to get more and more out of the way. What's and that comes to the style of the, where the game's gone and the trust. Because you can, you can have mental fatigue too, right, during the season if you just keep getting bombarded with information. That's the, that's yeah. the, that's the basic fatigue in a season. It, it's not physical fatigue. It starts with the mental fatigue, and then it works to you physically. Um, and it's something we've worked on. Uh, uh, we've, we've tried to give these guys as much time off as possible. I, I think it'll be hard... It'll be a hard look to see any other team that's got more time off than this team. And I think that's not for the physical part of it. It's for the, the, the every day putting the uniform on, the, the mental, the meetings, and uh, we've cut back our meetings. I think that's where it's gone, at least with these athletes I have. And I think that's a very important part of coaching is what do you have as a team? And uh, I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, but it's my gut, and I'm going with my gut as far as how we're coaching the club. You always talk about the uh, that position. Back to Wrensky, that position is the hardest to play for a young kid. When's the last time you saw a kid as a rookie? I don't know if you want to qualify as a teenager coming into the league and play that well at that uh, position. I, I haven't been around around many, and I, and you and I both have a, a great seat with them every day. Uh, I haven't been around many that's like this guy, um, and. And I say it again, not so, certainly what's on the ice, what you guys see on it, but what's in the locker room. Um, yeah, I, I am totally impressed as far as uh, uh, how he thinks it and just how he carries himself. That's very important to me, how the player carries himself. He's representing the organization. He's representing his teammates. Uh, he gets it. Two more questions on him. How does he go from a college schedule to an NHL schedule like this, and then two, I assume as he's you know played well, to opponents start paying attention to him and yeah. start game planning for him, and that's something he's got to overcome. Yeah. So how did he overcome those two things? Yeah, I, I, I think I think the five day break for him was a perfect time for him. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the greatest things that I uh, and I've said it to our guys, how it fell into place for us with this guy is that he left school mm -hmm. and jumped right into that American League team and played four rounds mm -hmm. and won. And one, um, I think he started understanding understanding the schedule and how much you're playing. It certainly, American League isn't like the National Hockey League. Um, I think it took him some time. There were some dips in his game. Uh, uh, there were some struggles in his game at time. Um, there, to, and I'm kind of going into your second question. His team started keen on him, started banging him around. Mm -hmm. uh, he understood how to play with soreness. And not leaving because you're sore, not playing, not playing because you're sore. I think you only leave the lineup when you're hurt. I think he understands that at a very young age. Played through some stuff, and I think that's helped him uh, through those experiences. And five days, I think, really helped him rejuvenate him and uh, got, got back to see his family. I mean, this is a 19-year-old kid. Uh, we expect so much out of these guys so quickly, and you forget about that. They have a family that. Christ, you and I at 19, were we out of our house at that time? I don't know. Uh, I mean, but the, we're expecting these guys to play at the top level of their profession. Um, so that was a good time for him, and I think it gave him some juice. And uh, So through the experience and, and through some of the bumps, because he had bumps. We didn't really talk too much about it, but he had some major bumps through here. Uh, uh, he's gained quick experience, and that's where I think he gets it into where he turns those good and bad experiences into make him a better player. And that has to come from within him. And he understands that. John, he's never had a fight. I don't think he's got a major penalty. Does it surprise you that a guy playing that position can do that without being aggressive, not even getting into well, even a little bit of a face wash kind no, of No, no, he, he, he he's been on. aggressive. Uh, uh, I don't want him to fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, the way the way I always talk about those guys, they, uh, so I don't really think you have to fight in this league. I mean, this league here is all these stage fights and all that stuff going on. I, I, I don't know where it's going as far as that's concerned. Uh, all I want Zach and, and our young guys, and it's part of what we try to teach, is uh, you need to take care of yourself. It, it doesn't mean you always have to drop your gloves and fight, uh, but you need to look at the guy and you need to push back when you need to push back. And uh, we show that in our video. Uh, sometimes you think our video is all X's and O's. We, I show a lot of, are you willing to push back here? Are you willing to look the guy in the eye and push back? You don't have to fight him, but push back because it's a very small league as far as that's concerned. If you don't stand up for yourself in certain situations, it runs through the league and then you're more of a target. He understands that. I think he's answered uh, some things. I, I think a great guy uh, for the examples is Andy. 
Andy stood in there and uh, and you see these guys, sometimes you, they kind of hesitate to do it. I said, well, I, I was told to do that. When you see those guys, Andy, it's instinctive with Andy. And I think it's instinctive with Z. Um, I forget what game it was. Uh, I can't forget, but I, I, I don't remember. But I loved it. Uh, uh, I love what he did. It was the first clip on our tape the next day as far as standing in there. And then Nick came in and helped him. Yeah. That's really good for your team.